Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this updated video on what is happening across the tropics. And so today, the 30th of November 2022 marks the official end of the Atlantic hurricane season of this year. And so we'll be taking a look at what has happened this hurricane season, but of course we'll be kickstarting with what is currently going on out there. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update all right and so let us go ahead and look at a view of what is happening right now and we'll be focusing on the caribbean and so we can see that there isn't too much going on across majority of the region except for the southwestern caribbean where we are seeing some activity in the vicinity of central america that is going to be moving inland and so that is likely to induce a lot of rainfall a lot of showers and thunderstorms in the area and extensive periods of heavy rainfall can result in all of that flash flooding especially across low-lying areas so areas such as panama costa rica nicaragua are likely to feel impacts from this blob of uh, all the shower and thunderstorm activity as we head throughout today and so as for the rest of the region we definitely see where we have some passing clouds uh, maybe they have a shower or so but there is nothing major going on at this time in the vicinity of Trinidad and Tobacco things are not bad at all we definitely see an improvement uh, that improvement that I spoke about in my last update video where I, I said that by Wednesday we would definitely be seeing an improvement and here it is now for the region so this is a break a well-needed break uh, because of all of the shower activity that was taking place in the area that resulted in a lot of flooding and so I hope that everyone is doing okay and so in terms in terms of current conditions across the region, we're looking at this uh, water vapor loop. And so where we have these whites and those greens, that is indicating areas of moisture. Uh, that is where we have that shower and thunderstorm activity taking place, such as in the Southwest Caribbean. And so also out in parts of the Atlantic Ocean. But across the Caribbean, we're seeing these colors, these yellows and oranges, and that is indicating dry air. And so where we have an abundance of dry air, we won't typically see too much going on in terms of activity so uh, that is why things are mainly quiet across the Caribbean right now so uh, parts of uh, northern South America Trinidad and Tobago the Lesser Antilles the Virgin Islands the Greater Antilles uh, we're seeing where we have all this dry air extended across the area and so that will likely result in mainly some lovely weather for most areas a lot of sunshine uh, and nothing too major on the horizon imminently and so as we take a look at the sea surface temperature across the north atlantic we're seeing here that uh, there is definitely that cool down taking place of course the hurricane season has ended and uh, we're going into hibernation in terms of these tropical cyclones for the next couple of months but it is not impossible for us to see off season activity but in terms of current ocean temperatures we're seeing that the only the warmest regions right now uh in terms of the atlantic basin are the caribbean and just off the coast of africa right within that region so nothing too significant is expected though if other conditions such as the wind shear aren't conducive then it isn't likely that we're going to be seeing too much happening and as i speak about that let us look at this graph right here and so uh this might be a bit confusing but on the x-axis there we have the different months of the year and so on the y-axis as we increase in value we increase in the amount of wind shear and stronger wind shear uh, provides a less conducive environment for development. So the black line that you're seeing, that is the mean or the average uh, wind shear that is usually out there between June and November we see that it is at its lowest and that is the period of the hurricane season but the blue line represents what happened this year and so looking to August we see that there was an increase uh, in the amount of wind shear out there that was above normal and so that helped to suppress activity across the Atlantic and another factor that should not be overlooked is the Saharan dust the plethora 
plethora of dry air that was out there prevented many tropical waves from developing. Some waves had so much circulation, it was so evident. However, looking at these satellite imagery, you weren't seeing anything in terms of shower and thunderstorm activity. So the dry air just chokes out these systems and prevent any tropical cyclogenesis or development of them. And so that was a story for July and August. And because of the lack of activity in August, that made this hurricane season the first since 1997 to feature the month of August without a tropical storm. And the first season of that happening in a La Nina year because many of us expected that this hurricane season would have been more active due to the La Nina but the dry air that was abundant said no to that so thankfully though the season could have been worse and uh, though it hasn't been the active season that was anticipated many people were devastated many lives were still lost in tropical cyclones such as Ian and Fiona so uh, that is still a very unfortunate situation here and so as I said guys we're not expecting to see much activity as we progress uh, through the off-season months that is in terms of tropical cyclone activity but tropical cyclones are definitely not needed for us to see a lot of rainfall or a lot of flooding across some areas I mean Trinidad literally proved that uh, this week and so uh, of course through the off-season months I will continue to give updates on what is happening whenever there is some heavy rainfall that is expected across some areas of course i'm going to be giving you guys updates so that is it for the 2022 atlantic hurricane season when all the season produced uh 14 named storms eight of which became hurricanes and two major hurricanes and so that amount of named storms 14 named storms is of course uh not really what many of the various sources anticipated again this hurricane season was quite average in terms of the number of named storms and it was actually below average in the amount of major hurricanes and uh, as i said it is because of it was because of all of that plethora of dry air and wind shear that was so extensive across the North Atlantic, especially between the months of July and August. The first storm was Alex, the final storm was Nicole, and uh, there have been over $50 billion in damages and over 300 people lost their lives, unfortunately. And I think that one name that will certainly be re uh, retired next year is Ian, and we will find out their replacement name sometime in spring of next year more than likely between march and april so guys as i said i'll continue to give updates so be on the lookout for those maybe not as often maybe just around two or three times a week maybe more if it is necessary if there is something major going on and that would include any major rainfall event or uh, even in terms of the cold fronts that are going to be making their way down from the u.s especially as we progress into early next year and uh, if you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there and of course remember to always be weatherwise